Well, hello. Hello. Are you camera? I am. Come on. I love this. Who are you? I'm Peter Watke. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I know you on Facebook. Yeah. Nice to meet you. As well. As Thank you. Well. Yeah. Um, so you, where do you live? I thought you lived in Baltimore. No, no, no. I live, oh, okay. I live in uh, Silver Spring, Cantwell. Oh, wonderful, so, wonderful. Okay, yeah. so we're actually like neighbors then. Oh, really? I live in Potomac. Oh. Hey. So, yeah. 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 Wow. No, I, uh, I, I, I this. I read most of it. I said, wow. um, I, I said, my God, what a woman! Uh, you know, the strength that you have to have. <sighs> wow, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very. It's been a very humbling experience doing this whole show. Uh -huh. um, this is the first time that anybody besides me has seen what these pages say word for word. Um, not even my family, I think, even knows I have these. Wow. Um, that's how this is. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's like oh. I had to go ahead and try to in some way protect my family. Sure. Over here, I have at the time other people who were minors mm -hmm. that didn't even need to get involved right. at all. So I had to try to protect them as much as right. possible. Right. But it's um, the more I got into it, the more I realized this is the screenplay of my teen years. And I was like, holy crap, I didn't quite realize that when I first started pulling it all out of its box. Mm -hmm. And then, like going through it after Judith says, "Do you have any more stuff?" And I'm going, "Well," <laughs> um, and I have this box. Right there. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the thing. Is, well, the thing is, is here's the here's the deal. I entered this photo and this photo, uh -huh. and then I ended up with those. That uh -huh. was that was one of my last minute ones, but okay. that was the one that I needed because these this top series here mm -hmm. is another period in my life. Okay. This is, that's after dealing this. Dealing with all No, yeah. this is dealing with being gang raped oh, yeah. in 1992. This has happened in the late 80s, early 90s, um, yeah. between the abuse, the, you know, all of that. Uh -huh. um, so but this, this is what I have to represent that because I did go through a rape kit and nothing was done about it. Um, they were in the military. They were soldiers. It happened off base in Lawton, Oklahoma, near Fort Sill. And um, I was in the middle of doing an investigation, mm -hmm. and it was being videotaped. And during the middle of it, the investigator said, let's take a break. He turned off the videotape, and he said, look, here's what's going to happen. And he began to tell me that the state wasn't going to take it because it involved the military and that the military wouldn't take it because it happened off base. I was 19 when that happened. I was 13 and 14 when just this exactly happened. That. Yeah, yeah. By the time I was five years old, I'd already been um, abused and, and molested within my own family. So I've gone through, I've lived it. Mm -hmm. I've lived my life has been nothing but that until I finally was able to get help. Um, it was after two suicide attempts, but <sighs> I'm here today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So to, to be able to tell this story has got to be almost like a release. Uh, it it is in some ways, and then in another way, it's it just is a reminder of how none of this. Uh -huh as far as the justice system is concerned, oh, has yeah. changed. And that hurts me a lot. Yeah. It also hurts me knowing that I did the best I could to mm -hmm. try to put people off the streets so mm -hmm. that they would not, that nobody else would ever have to go through that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard going to bed at night knowing that I don't know if, yeah anybody else has been hurt by those people. Um, yeah. So that's the kind of nightmare. And then the, 
just knowing the fact that, you know, you you become an adult and you finally know that, oh, all of the things that I go through mm -hmm. is because I've had PTSD since I was five. You know, younger than that even. Um, and then we didn't know what PTSD was when I did get help as a teenager. Okay. Um, so that was never a, a, like a true diagnosis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's, it was definitely there, wow. um, you know, and I did deal with some of the things that goes along with PTSD then, but as an adult, after Desert Storm and we start learning about PTSD and Stockholm mm -hmm. Syndrome and shell shock and all of that, mm -hmm. and the fact that how it rewires people's brains differently, mm -hmm based on the different traumatic events they've gone through. Mm -hmm. So one person's PTSD is not the same as somebody else's. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just a given. People who go to war and suffer PTSD from war is completely different than somebody who suffers PTSD from, say, a murder or a sexual assault. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to bring awareness that we need to do more research because I have a theory in my mind that we're doing all this research to try to treat our veterans, which I think is great, mm -hmm. but I think somebody needs to come along and start figuring out a way how we can start treating the victims as soon as they report it, mm -hmm. instead of having them have to go through a life of trying to figure out things on their own. Yeah. Um, but now that we know what PTSD is, now that we, we can get people help much sooner. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, all, all my help is through the VA. Okay, yeah. So I'm, I'm very confident and aware of um, sure. all of the vets that are yeah. going through this. Yeah, um, it's horrible. Um, I, I tell people that um, when my rape happened, I was the wife of a soldier, the mother of an army brat. Mm -hmm. You know, we joked around about that when he was born. He was our little army brat. Um, and um, then that happened, and I totally lost faith in Those the sorry. military. Yeah. Um, the fact that these guys are going to protect me, um, that really left out the window real quick. Yeah. Um, that ruined my life, that ruined my family's life, that ruined my son's life, it ruined my husband's life, it ruined, because it was, it's still not resolved for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This is how I'm trying to get the, the resolution that I can from just, it. Just talking about it. Um, it does. Um, and I've, I've been in therapy, in and out of therapy forever. <laughs> really? Oh, no, gee, yeah, right? <laughs> um, I've had plenty of times where I have broken down. A lot of times nobody sees it. I have a few friends who have seen that deep, dark place. <laughs> um, but it is, um, it's not easy to deal with. It's, it's really not. I do the best I can. And most of the time, Life is really awesome. I will, um, you know, I, I will say that life is really awesome, despite all of this crap in it. I'm happy that at times I chose I would not choose Yeah, yeah, and okay. the, the statistics and the odds based on um, what it was that I did take, uh, that I did ingest, it should have killed me. Um, was, but it didn't, good. and I did, I know there was nobody around when it happened. Um, in fact, I was home alone that weekend, and nobody knew about it until after I did go into treatment and started talking about all these different things, and it was like the first time it didn't work, I went, oh, well, I just need more of these, and let's add some other weirdness into the mix. But that's, you know, that's how bad it was at the time. I, so. I went through not war or anything like that, but I had, I had a horrible marriage. I'm looking back at it. Mm -hmm. um, 37 years of verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had my own business. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing, when you're going to get a real job, yeah. you know, and yeah. I was fairly successful. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Well, in the ice house out in Bristol, out of Bristol, Virginia. Okay, yeah. Upper, upper middle class, mm -hmm. drove a BMW, you know, all, all the fun stuff that is supposed to make people happy. Huh? Right. Well, I had cancer in 2004. Going through cancer, yeah. I realized, hey, that's it. It was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. My marriage wasn't worth it. Worth it. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, everything just trying to make her happy. None of us did. Right. I came to the realization, I'm never going to make her happy. Right. So let's get on with life. Mm -hmm. We have got a divorce. I filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. Went through all that stuff. Started like at 60 all over again. There you go. So, you know, yeah. I've, I've had to. You've had to transform and, and yeah. rework that. Yeah. And here I am. And it's hard to do that. I mean, I feel like I've done that so many times in my life. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've been married and divorced twice. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to say I've learned a lot about relationships, but then again, <laughs> um, not what you I, well, <laughs> I've had some really good relationships in my life, and I've had some not so good relationships yeah. in my life. Every relationship I've learned something from, yeah. I'd like to think. Um, what you always And, and right now, I choose to be single and do what I want to do um, with no strings attached because I don't have time for a committed relationship with anybody. It's yeah. I I. I don't want to say I'm not relationship material, it's just that I have not found the right person right. who can, I can have deal with me, basically, yeah, I, in, in I, one way to put it. I, I would um, imagine you have ups and downs all the time. I do. Um, I, I have more ups. You know, it's weird because I'm in like this really weird area in my life where I have like a lot of things that are kind of coming full circle, uh -huh. where things have like started the beginning journey and now they're coming to an end. Uh -huh. And at the same time, there's probably like five other doors that are open right now that all have my name telling me to walk through them. And I'm trying to walk through all of them at the same time, which is kind of hard to do. Yeah. But they're all interconnected and related in one way. Awesome. So I have to be walking through those doors all at once right now. And it, it's just like, okay, I guess we're not going to have too much fun in 2017 <laughs> because we have a lot of work to do instead. So that's pretty much where I'm at. So I'm, I'm gearing up for just another year of hard work, trying to keep uh, this going. Eventually, I would like to see this on as a solo exhibit and keep growing because I have a lot more work to show too. It's a very it's a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a lot more potential I, I, here than what's just here. Yeah, I wish it. people. There's so many people that go through life with blinders on. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be aware that this goes on, but they don't want to know about it. The other thing is the subject matter is very sensitive for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah. Um, they don't want to realize that this is happening. Mm -hmm. That's and, exactly right. and they want to turn the other cheek and be like, no, this is this doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. um, this has never happened to anybody in my family. I don't know anybody. Um, but the thing is, is that it's all interconnected. I, you know, I can name off for four, at least four documentaries that I would put on a list and tell people, you need to watch these mm -hmm. and look past the, the, the subject matter that they're bringing to light and really look at the statistics and the numbers and everything behind what they're presenting and mm -hmm. where they got that from. How did that connect mm -hmm. to which, which way is DC from here? You know, I don't know, but the guys down in DC it's it's all a trickle down and it's you wonder why it's not working because you have our police you have right. investigated you've got all these people getting a paycheck but nobody's really doing their jobs taking care of real criminals yep. and protecting the community it's As it's all someone, i've got this gun and i'm sorry that i see this much too often if somebody it's, has it's all about it and it contacts they can get away with anything oh yeah no, you know true. that is true that is true i mean if i if i would have had money mm -hmm. 
when I was 19 years old, I could have tried to fight mm -hmm. the military. Yeah, yeah. At 19 years old, being a newlywed and having a baby at home, yeah. on top of everything, um, that wasn't gonna happen. So I did my best to just pick up and move on. Yeah. And after probably about within a year after it all happened, I was like, I had to say to my husband, I can't do this to you and I can't do this to our child because things are gonna get worse. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that and I knew, I knew it because I had already been through all of that. And I already had therapy for all of that. So I, and I knew how much the, that still affected me. Mm -hmm. I got help and treatment to be able to carry on with my life after turning 16, getting out of treatment. And then I was in some foster homes for a while until I met my son, my oldest son's father. And then we were down in Fort Sill, mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. off base. And then those turns of events happened. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's some kind of a loophole happening around military bases where if something like what happened to me is a known thing and soldiers are getting away with this left and right, that concerns me. If you um, look, at, look at the history. Of but who, who am I to take on the military and have try to find somebody to investigate anything like this? It's like the stuff that the Naval Academy. There's been, I have a son in the Navy. There's been, I wish I had him. My dad was in the Navy too. Okay. <laughs> Out of all the military, <laughs> I I can I can handle the yeah. Navy probably out of all of them. Yeah. Um, and more so just because my my middle child is there. Oh, so awesome. um, I have to love the Navy right now. <laughs> um, I think it's a requirement as a parent to win one of your children yeah. decides they need to go join the military. Um, yeah, he's a good kid and he's. Awesome. Got a good head on his shoulders. Awesome. He'll do fine. Yeah. You know, in the military, they, they do whitewash. I know. Whitewash a lot. I know. And, uh, I know. And I have always told myself, my son is too good for that. <laughs> and, um. What's he doing in there? Huh? What's the she do? He is a. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So he's gonna do all right. Yes. He's, yes. A, he's a very smart kid, so. Hello. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> my dad was during um, the Korean War. He was one of the guys over here in, in Massachusetts, I think. Okay. And he was an airplane mechanic. So oh. they bring the airplanes back, he fix them. Send them back. Uh, send them back, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. I'm gonna let you get back. To I really no, appreciate it. Hey, yeah, you, know. you too. Thank you very much. Um, and by the way, just to let you know, I've been recording this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right there. No. <laughs> um, That's fine. So I don't know if you want me to cut this conversation out sure. or not, or if you don't I'm, mind me sharing it. No, I don't mind it at Great. all. Great. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you very much for stopping. Good luck and stay strong.